The F-15 Eagle has long been a legendary fighter, but even from its conception, there were plans to take the aircraft even further and push it to even higher limits. Faced with the looming threat of nuclear war with the Soviet Union, the United States began testing next generation capabilities before even the first dozen F-15s rolled off the assembly line. In the 49 years since the F-15 Eagle first entered service, the air superiority fighter has proven itself in combat time and time again, racking up an astonishing 104 kills with no losses to the F-15. To this day, the twin-engine F-15 remains the fastest fighter in the American arsenal. With a top speed of Mach 2.5, it surpasses even the F-22 and F-35. Around 1975, the United States became interested in the concept of super maneuverability. Super maneuverability is an aircraft's capability to execute tactical maneuvers that are not possible with purely aerodynamic mechanisms. Such maneuvers may use controlled side slipping and angles of attack beyond maximum lift. This capability was researched beginning in 1975 at the Langley Research Center in the United States and eventually resulted in the development of the McDonnell Douglas F-15 STOL MTD. This aircraft was a two-seater F-15B and was to be used as a one-off off technology demonstrator in a series of advanced tests regarding maneuver technology and short takeoff and landing. The F-15 in question was serial number 71-0290 and rolled off the assembly line in 1973. This aircraft would go on to contribute enormously to the United States' next generation of aircraft. As previously mentioned, in 1975, Langley Research Center began to conduct programs studying two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles. Government and industry studies of non-asymmetric two-dimensional nozzles in the early 1970s had identified significant payoffs for thrust vectoring 2D nozzle concepts, which had obviously attracted the attention of the Air Force. In 1977, Langley started a system integration study of thrust vectoring, thrust reversing, and 2D nozzles on the F-15 with McDonnell Douglas. In 1984, the Flight Dynamics Laboratory and the Air Force Aeronautical Systems Division awarded a contract to McDonnell Douglas for an advanced development STOL MTD experimental aircraft. The vector control of the engine outflow was further supported by the addition of canards in 1988, just in front of the F-15's traditional wings. The canards themselves were actually modified horizontal tail surfaces stolen or borrowed from the F-A-18 Hornet. The proof of concept was done on the second F-15B off the assembly line with serial number 71-0291. By using these additions, the F-15 technology demonstrator managed to take off at speeds as low as 42 miles per hour and reduce the length of the runway required for takeoff by 25%. In order to shorten landing requirements, the program leveraged reversible thrust from the aircraft's engines in conjunction with its canards and thrust vector controls to reduce landing roll by an astonishing 78%. While a standard F-15 Eagle needs more than 7,500 feet of clear runway to land, the F-15 STOL MTD could do it in just 1,650 feet. The front canards also help to increase maneuverability at lower speeds. A similar approach has since been adopted by China's J-20, the nation's first stealth fighter. By August 15th of 1991, when McDonnell Douglas ended its program after accomplishing their flight objectives, the F-15 STOL MTD achieved some impressive performance results. It demonstrated vector takeoffs with rotations at speeds as low as 42 miles per hour, a 25% reduction in takeoff roll, landing on just 1,650 feet of runway, accompanied by thrust reversal in flight to produce rapid deceleration. When TF-15 or 710290 was handed over to NASA, NASA added the Pratt & Whitney Pitch Yaw Balance Beam Nozzle on a new set of engines, the Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW229. Unlike the previous thrust vector control apparatus under the STOL MTD program, which utilized a simpler two-directional thrust vector control that allowed the pilot to orient the outflow of thrust up to 20 degrees up or down, these new nozzles offered a full 360 degree arc where the nozzles could redirect outflow. 
Combined, these systems produced a new aircraft that bore only a passing resemblance to the F-15 it started out as, and according to the Air Force and NASA observations, was actually a better performer in the air. NASA officials estimated that stability at supersonic speeds was improved by a factor of more than 100% with the addition of the new front canards. The intent behind these efforts was never truly to add to the capabilities of the F-15, but rather to test what capabilities the United States could develop for future generations of fighters. For example, from testing and research by the STOL MTD program, the United States Air Force abandoned the concept of super maneuverability as counterproductive to BVR engagements, as the Cobra maneuver leaves the aircraft in a state of near zero energy having bled off nearly all of its speed in performing the maneuver without gaining any compensating altitude in the process. During one-on-one -on -one engagements, this leaves the aircraft very vulnerable to both missile and gun attack by a wingman or other hostile even if the initial threat aircraft overshoots the super maneuvered aircraft. Other aspects of the F-15 STOL MTD program would go on to be implemented in the F-15E Strike Eagle, making it one of the most effective air-to-ground aircraft operational today. Alright guys, we're going to be fighting uh, one of these F-15 uh, STOL MTDs here, and it's a mod, I'll put the link in the description below. Pretty iconic uh, F-15. When I was younger, I actually thought, like when I was kind of a kid, I thought this is what an F-15 was, just because you see so many pictures of this thing. Um, into the merge, and some very nice turn performance here, but I did beat him. Um, that F-15 over there flown by long shot. He's still trying to get the hang of it because it is new and uh, You can see every time I try to lock him. He just He's just all over the place. That thing is just flying up and down and left and right The maneuverability is kind of crazy Fox 2 missed. Oh my god He definitely fired an AIM-9X at me, and it was so close that I think it hit me like a rocket, more so than an actual missile. So that was interesting. Um, now the uh, F-15 STOL MTD here, those of you who played Tom Clancy Hawks will remember this aircraft. And uh, I believe the new Ace Combat 7 also has it. So it's a very, very iconic aircraft. Uh, got the lock here, but he's way too good at getting that nose around. Basically, min ranges um, any attempt by me to shoot a Fox 2. Luckily, that means his Fox 2 is also jammed. Uh, but this here doesn't look good. That thing's got insane AOA. Alright, and uh, oh, and by the way, since I have you guys, before I forget, thank you to all of you for almost getting to 200,000 subscribers. Never thought I'd see the day. Now, this F-15 here, what I'm noticing, I'm having a really hard time uh, getting my nose onto him or getting him within launch parameters of even the 9X. Um, just feels like he's all over the place. You know, he's up, he's down, and Longshot's doing a great job here of basically kicking my ass with this thing. Um, Fox 2, see he's just, it's, it's too fast. He's there and then he's gone. You know, the AOA really helps him pull to places where it would make it really difficult for me to get a shot. Fox 2 again, and that one actually hit him. That hit him real nice. 
finally. And you saw his 9X just narrowly go over my head. And it does seem like he might be a little bit damaged here. And possibly done for. I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna kill him with the gun. But I'm not happy about it. Because this is such an iconic aircraft. And there's only one out there like this. So it kind of hurts to shoot it down like this. Even in like a, you know, even in DCS like this. <laughs> Something about this just doesn't feel right. But it is long shot and uh, he's going to have to die here. Yeah, that thing was pretty damaged. You could tell he was struggling to just fly it. Oh, that hurts, man. That hurt me on a on a deep level to shoot that thing down. Such a beautiful F-15. Alright guys, so quick little TACV review here. I just want to see us uh, uh, look at the numbers for this F-15. You can see this TACV model does not have the canards. It's just using a normal F-15. Um, obviously, you just assume that this is that uh, STOLMTD F-15. Um, that being said, look at the performance on this thing. And always keep in mind when it comes to mods, the guys who are making them are doing the best they can with publicly available information most of the time. And therefore, the mods don't actually represent the true characteristics of the aircraft. It's just there's no like years and years of data that they've put into it. Um, so it's just kind of a rough, you know, estimation for us to play around with and get an idea of what this aircraft was or could do. And here into the merge, you can see that Longshot is able to pull 31 degrees, 31.1. Point two. I think that's the max I see here. Uh, that is insane degrees. Like I've seen that only from something like you know a, an insane turn by a tom or by a and an, a Hornet or the F twenty two. There's the only two places where I've seen numbers like this. And even the Hornet would really struggle, I think, to pull instantaneous thirty one degrees. Um, but anyway, that's exactly what this F-15 was designed to do, thrust vectoring in a two-dimensional space. Uh, this is not the NASA variant with the three, 3D vectoring. This is just the 2D vectoring. And, uh, you know, you got your canards on there. And you can see the nose just gets right on. And I'm not even, you know, anywhere near nose on at this point. And I'm pulling to min radius. So I'm emerging at, you know, if whatever speed. I don't want to rewind. Um, and then I'm pulling to min radius, so I'm just keeping the afterburner pulled out and I'm just trying to get nose on as fast as I can a min radius turn uh, And also trying to jam this west so that he can't hit me with the Fox 2 You can see that missile go by it was obviously min ranged and then I'm trying to use a bit of the vertical here to get nose on because and look at this thing <laughs> Wow he just pulls the nose up at will. He's just like, I gotta point my nose at him. Cool, Fox 2. <laughs> and that went best. Um, so, I mean, I don't really want to get all the way through this, but it was it was really, really interesting to see these numbers and to see how well this mod, you know, gives the F-15 insane AOA. It's basically, it kind of felt like an F-15 with a Hornet AOA, but had the power of an F-15. Like, it was pretty crazy um, to see that thing. I don't don't really know how you fight that, but uh, we'll see. We'll try to do it in the next video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thank you to Longshot for helping out with this uh, video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.